Last week, the Dauntless crew split forces. While Ty and I explored St. Augustine, Sydney flew to Colorado to help her boyfriend Alex move across the country and join the Dauntless crew. I'm Sid, and these are my best friends. My mom, Kim, my dad, Ty, and my sister, Maddie, who before starting her own adventure, joined us in rocking out a state-of-the-art refit on our floating home. Now, we're ready to set sail to die with memories, not dreams, and live dauntless. Getting ready to pull the anchor. Well, pull the bridle off the mooring ball anyway. Leave St. Augustine. Beautiful morning. As Ty and I set out to continue our trek north. We're all packed up. Are you so excited? No, this drive's gonna suck. <laughs> After putting a few last minute things in the truck, Alex and I headed south. It's been a while since we saw Maddie, so Texas, here we come. Another first today. We are motoring out of St. Augustine because there is virtually no wind. Uh, but our first today is, this is the first passage that just you and I have done. That's just the two of us. Well, yeah. and Stella, but she's no help. She's not all. having any of this. I don't know how much of a salty dog she is. This remains to be seen. But look at this absolutely beautiful water out here. It's a bit rolly, but uh, I'll take it over the chop that we had coming up from, from Cape Canaveral. I'm just going to putz along today, about eight hours, head to St. Mary's, and uh, we're going to anchor for the night, get up and do it all again tomorrow. Say bye, Kim. Bye, Kim. So we're trying to decide whether we should break my promise to Sid and <laughs> do a, an overnight so that we can just get to Wausau Sound where we're going to tuck in to get to Isle of Hope Marina or whether we should just cut it early for the day and go to St. Mary's as originally planned, drop the hook, chill out for the night and then get up early in the morning and finish it tomorrow. So. Here's where our problem comes in. Well, it, the wind's gonna, we've been in the, wind has been on the nose all day. Uh, it's gonna turn around to our 90 on our beam, our starboard beam here in the next couple hours, supposedly. And then we're gonna have 15 to 20 knots of wind on the beam all night, flat seas. And the seas are so flat. Here's the problem. If we go, if we speed up anymore, <laughs> we're gonna get in at like two in the morning. And so then we have to slow down Right. And then add, and then it adds hours, four, five, six hours to the actual sailing, and then we're just going to be tired from the overnight, and then we're not going to get anything done tomorrow. So, honestly, I think that we just let's just go to St. Mary's. I think the smart move is just to go and anchor early. We can get a shower, yeah. chill out for the night. We've been making water the whole time, so we got and plenty of water. We made power, and or yeah, we're making power and water, <laughs> and I cooked lunch on the induction cooktop, and. I think we're going to be over 100% or at 100% in the day. So, not bad. Let's try to use some power. So, I guess we'll go to St. Mary's and anchor as intended. Run the dog and let the dog run around. That'll be good. Yeah. So, I guess our decision's made. In the meantime, I'm just going to sit here in the shade and enjoy the rest of the, of the trip. All one hour of it. I don't even think we have, well, Probably <laughs> under an hour like, because we're doing seven and a half knots right now. We're going to be at 2.30 in the afternoon. It'll be awesome. All right. So decision made. Done. Great. All right. Sydney, my dear, where are your notes? Uh, 
episode notes. Ah, there they are. Here are the notes about our trip. Okay. So, St. Mary's right here. We're going to come in. It's a big, wide, deep channel. Yep. I think this is the one with all of the... Nuclear ones. subs. Cool. Yeah. So, as long as we don't hit a submarine. <laughs> Um, then we're going to come in right here as we come in the opening, and we're just going to make a, a left-hand turn. We're going to follow these markers down to this anchorage by Little Tiger Island. Okay. Little Tiger Island. There's an anchorage right here, and it's right across from, it'll be outside the channel, and it's right across from this boat ramp, which is where the Coast Guard station is at. She wrote lots of notes. Uh, entered during the day. Yeah, Little Tiger Island. Yep. Coming into new places is always exciting. I mean, that's a word people use, right? Is exciting. Just being a nervous pansy. <laughs> I know, I am. Stop being a pansy. Sorry. Ugh. Sorry. We're sailing on a lake today. She's wringing her wrists and her fingers. No, not about that. It's about anchoring. It's or not anchoring. I can I can anchor. I know how to do that. It's navigating places where we haven't been before. That's the whole point of owning a sailboat, is I... going places we've never been before. No! Fine. Okay. <sighs> Fine. Obviously, Stella doesn't care. I think she'd like it if we just let her nap in peace. All right, so we're coming in to St. Mary's uh, Inlet, and we are catching on incoming tide. And I've got to show you guys this. So. Uh, one is the boat speed, and the other one is our speed over ground. So first, I'm gonna show you boat speed, 6.9, jumping between there and seven knots, and we're doing 8.9 to 9.3 knots. It's absolutely crazy. Two, 2.1 knots of current carrying us in. While mom and dad navigate St. Mary's Inlet, Alex and I are saying hello to Texas. The St. Mary's Inlet is split nearly right down the middle of the Florida-Georgia line, with Cumberland Island on the Georgia side and Fort Clinch on the Florida side. Having just left the Castillo de San Marcos in St. Augustine, I found myself very intrigued by Fort Clinch. It was fortified in 1736 by the Spanish that held colonies in Florida, yet various nations controlled the territory. It wasn't until over a century later in 1847 that the U.S. started construction of the fort. The compound is pentagonal in shape with both inner and outer walls and consists of almost 5 million bricks. As a result, in 1862, during the Civil War, General Robert E. Lee ordered the fort abandoned as the brick walls were vulnerable to attacks and thus obsolete. Although it was never fully completed or used in direct combat, Fort Clinch served as a military post during three U.S. engagements. In 1972, the fort was placed on the National Register of Historic Places. Today, visitors can tour and witness reenactments of military life at the fort. While researching the St. Mary's River entrance, we learned that it is often used by Trident-class nuclear submarines, and it's not uncommon if one pops up to the surface nearby. Although we never saw one surface, we did see dozens of these shrimp boats. After an uneventful motor sail, Ty and I cooked up some yummy oven roasted veggies with grilled chicken and enjoyed a happy anchoring cocktail and a peaceful evening. After our pit stop in Houston, we were back on the road with a wet drive into Louisiana. then over a massive bridge across Lake Charles, and another over Baton Rouge, before driving back under blue skies as we headed into Mississippi. Thank you, Leonard Skinner's Sweet Home, Alabama. As we drive through downtown Mobile, we go through a super cool tunnel. This is the George C. Wallace Tunnel. The tunnel is built underwater. 
This 3,000 feet of highway that goes under the Mobile River spits you out on Blakely Island, where you can see the USS Alabama at Battleship Memorial Park. Oh, well, that's awesome. That is super cool. And right after we passed the park, we got stuck in traffic where it took us almost an hour to go only five miles. All right guys, uh, we've got one final push to get to Savannah and we were gonna leave this morning at 6.30, um, something like that. And we decided if we get up earlier, let's just go. Cause it's gonna be at six knots, it's gonna be about a 14 hour day to the mouth of the river. And then we have another 10 miles to go in to get to the marina. So, um, whatever, I guess we're getting old. It's 4.30, we're up. Uh, we have this lovely um, paper mill behind us that's making this hum to wake us up this morning. Um, but yeah, it's before, sun before sunrise, it's dead calm. It's supposed to be... <laughs> like three feet on seven seconds. And when we get to Georgia this afternoon, it's gonna be two feet on nine seconds. But thank goodness the wind's gonna start coming around. So by this afternoon, I think we're gonna get about 15 knots of wind. And um, the uh, I think it's gonna be a nice flat sail. So one more thing to check out. Look at that moon. All right. Let's fire it up and uh, warm up the engines and then we're going to be ready to go. Tiger Island. Time to go. Oh, and that's my alarm clock to get up and get ready to leave. Uh, we already, we're already leaving. We already did that. Yeah. <laughs> but the nice thing about leaving this early. Oh, sunrise. Is all the beautiful colors of the sunrise. With a beautiful sunrise and safely past all the fishing boats, we cast our own fishing lines in hopes of a fresh catch for dinner. But no. Rut row. Sally, get back. You wanna just cut it? Yeah, I think we're gonna cut it. Okay. Ooh, yeah, you're you're tied off. You want oh, your little that's my ball. nip. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Do you want your little nippers? Uh. So we are approaching the opening to the Wausau Sound. Ty is fervently watching the charts. We're plenty deep now. We're back up to 23 feet, so we passed all the shallow stuff. It's got some shallow stuff that comes in around it, which is a little unnerving, but everything was just perfect. And it's rough coming into places like this because the water is not it's dirty, clear and blue and pretty. It's like kind of green and tan and muddy looking and like baby shit like baby shit <laughs> but we're almost to our resting place for the next couple months yeah it's kind of exciting we just have a few miles left maybe 10 so and it's gonna be up on this really really wide river it narrows up here in a bit but yeah. and apparently on the chart one of the things to note is that this is an area for shark and tarpon so we'll see if we can see anything. There's a there's a dive spot or a fishing spot, fishing slash dive spot, called Idiots Point West and <laughs> Idiots Point East. <laughs> hmm. Um, Wonder if there's a reason for that. Yeah, fishing or diving hotspot. Wow. Yeah. I mean, tarpon are cool, but I've swam with tarpon. Sharks. I, I don't mind swimming with sharks. It's the bull sharks that bite you 
because they just they want to feel you out. Do we need to go that way some more? Are you driving the boat? Well, I just, are you driving the boat? I want you to drive. Are the you boat. driving the boat? I'm leaving him alone now, so he can drive the boat because I think that we need to turn a little. And there goes the beeps. He's turning. Tend to port. Anyway, it's been a good passage. We had our little weather debacle around Cape Canaveral, but I think that all things considered, we spent a couple of extra days in St. Augustine just to kind of wait it, <laughs> wait it out. But I think everything went great. And so it's just this last little stretch. So that's very exciting. Anyway, see if I can take some footage along the way. Coming into the Wausau Sound was a bit stressful for me. All the research we did to prepare for this journey indicated that it can be tricky and definitely not to be navigated if it is dark and stormy or without local knowledge. Fortunately, we came in at nearly high tide, so with plenty of depth beneath our keels and hours of daylight left, we had the perfect conditions to motor up the Wilmington River and wind around to the Skidaway River to this beautiful piece of paradise we are going to call home for a bit. Finally, Florida baby! After driving all day, we crashed at my grandma's house before we got up the next morning, put Alex's stuff in storage, swapped the truck for our car, and headed right back out of Florida. Hello Georgia, Savannah, here we come. Hope is situated on the Skidaway River just outside of Savannah, Georgia. We find ourselves taking walks nearly every night on the streets of this cute little town beneath these towering trees that provide a canopy of shade and peaceful sounds. In this little slice of heaven, we get to sit under beautiful sunsets just about every single day. Don't forget to like this video and leave a comment below. If you haven't already, subscribe and click that bell so you're notified when we post our next video. See you next week!